Hi everyone and welcome back in my studio. In this video I'm going to show you how to connect your pneumatic hammer to your compressor. There is a lot of confusion about that, I had some questions myself, so after doing some research I hope to clarify everything in this video. So from what I've seen, most stone carvers connect their pneumatic hammer to the compressor through a long air hose which is divided into two segments. The first segment consists of a long air hose which is connected to the compressor, then there is a tap placed at its end and then a shorter hose which then connects to the pneumatic hammer. Now I still didn't get a definitive answer about why the air hose should be divided into two segments with a tap in between, but what I suspect is that if you put the tap all the way at the end of the air hose immediately connecting to the pneumatic hammer that will make the whole tool a bit too long and thus uncomfortable to handle while carving. Whereas if you place the tap all the way at the compressor that's a bit too far and then you would need to go every time back and forth switching it on and off. So it seems reasonable to have that tap attached within hands reach but not too close to the pneumatic hammer itself. So in this video I'm going to show you how to assemble this system, namely the longer air hose, the tap and the shorter air hose, being this the most comprehensive one and the most complex one, and then you can feel free to experiment with the other two variations, since they are much simpler and they involve just removing this smaller segment. So now that we have understood how the set is arranged, let's have a look at each and every component you'll need to assemble it. So what we need is a pneumatic hammer, in this case I have a kuturi hammer, then we need a male end of a quick connect which we will screw into the pneumatic hammer, this male end will then fit into the female end of the quick connect and it's best if you have a female end with a hose nipple which will fit into the shorter segment of the air hose. Don't forget to place hose clamps on each side of the hose before inserting these two together. So then we have the air hose. We have here another hose nipple that will fit into the tap. And since this tap has a thread in this direction, I need a connecting piece to connect it to another hose nipple, which will then fit into the longer segment of the air hose. This one is also fitted with a hose clamp here. Now you can find different types of uh, taps. This one is structured like this, but you can find also other taps which are already fitted with hose nipples on both sides, so that would make everything easier. So again, this is the most complex system. Alternatively, if you don't want this extra segment, you could directly connect the pneumatic hammer to the longer end of the hose by putting this female end of the quick connect there and then you will need here the male end of the quick connect. This will connect to the tap and then the tap goes into the pneumatic hammer and here you have a much simpler combination but of course your hammer will become longer due to the insertion of this tap here. And again, as I said before, there is a third system which would consist in directly attaching the tap to the compressor, but if I were you, I wouldn't do that because it's nice to have the tap within hands reach to regulate the airflow, which will then affect the speed and the power at which the hammer works. Okay, so now that we have seen each component, let me show you how to assemble the set. Although the operation is quite straightforward and it speaks for itself. Okay, so all we need is a bench vise, a couple of wrenches of different sizes for all the components and the screwdriver for the hose clamps. And I will show you how to assemble the set systematically, working my way from the pneumatic hammer all the way back to the compressor. So first of all, we need to attach the pneumatic hammer to the male end of the quick connect. And I like to place this here within the workbench. And then you can take the pneumatic hammer and just screw it on top. That's it. So this is already one component. It will always stay detached from the rest 
of the system and you'll attach it to the female end of the quick connect only when you'll need the hammer. This will allow you to quickly switch between different types of hammers. Then we'll take the female end of the quick connect and we'll place it here. And that's where you then insert the smaller segment of the hose. Don't forget to put the hose clamp before inserting the hose into the nipple. Then lower the hose clamp and tighten it with a screwdriver. Make sure that that's really tight as you don't want any air coming out of that connection. And then we do the same thing at the other end, only here we will connect it to this hose nipple as this will need to be attached to the tap. But before attaching this hose to this nipple, I like to have this set mounted beforehand, otherwise you'll have this thing dangling around every time you want to connect these pieces to each other. So first I turn these two into each other. Again, I can't stress enough that these connections need to be really tight, otherwise you'll lose some air. So this is what we have now, and again, you might have taps with already a hose nipple attached to them, that's amazing, but I don't have that, so I'll need to attach this to that, and as you can see, the two threads don't fit, so I need a piece in between. And then the last hose nipple here. So this is what we have now. And we just simply need to attach it to both ends of the hose. Don't forget to put the hose clamps on each side. One important thing though, you might feel the urge to put some Teflon tape inside those connections to make it tighter, but don't do that. The problem with Teflon is that if a small piece breaks off, it will go all the way into the pneumatic hammer and it will jam it up. So don't use Teflon. So simply take this part of the hose and let's insert it here. Let's secure that with the hose clamp. Okay, that's one end, let's do the same at the other end. And here we have the connection of the two hose segments with the tap in between. And if we follow the air hose, you can see how this is attached to the compressor. I've already mounted it because the process is exactly the same as we have seen. Basically, you have a hose nipple in here that attaches it to the tap of the compressor and the clamp to keep everything tightened. Turn it on and air flows in. So this is what we have now. Air is already flowing in. All you need to do now is take the hammer, insert it in here, open the air valve and start carving. Also guys, when working with these tools, don't forget to wear protection, okay? Ear protection, eye protection, gloves and a dust mask. Okay, this was it. I hope that the explanation was clear enough, but if you still have any questions, comments, remarks, or perhaps you know of a different way of connecting your pneumatic hammer to the compressor, please leave that in the comment section here below. I'll be more than happy to read that. If the information was useful, like, subscribe, share the video. Any sign of support is appreciated. Thanks for watching. Stay safe. My name is Adel Jabber and as always,